The MC businesses are some of the best businesses in GTA Online, and the main reason for that is because you can have up to five of them. Nope, it's not just one single business, like a bunker, there's five of these, and just like pretty much everything else in GTA Online, there's no real way to tell which one's good without trying it out for yourself. So, I'm here to help. So today, we're gonna go over everything you need to know about the MC businesses and get you up to speed on which ones to buy, how to operate them, and how to make the most money possible. So if you enjoyed this video, a thumbs up is always appreciated because that's gonna help this video reach more people like you and consider subscribing for more videos like this one. If you ever need friends or people to help you sell any of these business stocks or do other stuff with like grinding out money or do heists or maybe you just want somewhere where you can talk about GTA. If that's you, join our Discord server. We've now got well over 1,000 members over there so I'll leave a link below and hopefully that can help you out. Down below as well, you'll find a link to my TikTok account where I upload daily clips and tips over there as well, so go give us a follow over there. Alright, the 5 MC businesses are the Document Forgery, the Weed Farm, the Counterfeit Cash Factory, Meth Lab, and Cocaine Locker. And all of them operate the exact same way. The only differences are of course the locations, the cost, and the amount of money that they can make. So before we get too deep into any of the confusing stats, Let's go over how to buy and operate these businesses first. If you want to own a motorcycle club business, believe it or not, you'll need a motorcycle club first. Crazy, right? And in order to start a motorcycle club, you'll need a clubhouse. Crazy how all that works. Speaking from experience, you probably won't be using your MC clubhouse much at all, so you can just go ahead and buy the cheapest one right here for $200,000. When I was a beginner, I bought one of the more expensive clubhouses, so I can definitely say that it's not worth it, so just buy the cheapest one. While there are some fun little activities inside your clubhouse like darts and arm wrestling, they're really not that useful. Pretty much the only reason you'll be in your clubhouse is to buy MC businesses because the laptop in your clubhouse is the only place that you can actually buy them. MC businesses are mostly passive, meaning that most of the work will be done in the background while you can do pretty much anything else in GTA Online, so they're really easy to run. Just like we spoke about last week with the bunker, as soon as you walk into any of your MC businesses, you'll see a supplies bar and a stock bar down on the bottom right. Your job is to keep resupplying the supplies bar and your staff inside the business will convert those supplies into stock. We'll get into the exact earnings and the differences between all the businesses soon, but while I explain how they operate, I'm just gonna use the counterfeit cash factory as an example. As you can see here, the supplies bar is split into five little sections. That's there as a visual guide, so basically that's gonna help you determine whether you should resupply your business yet or not. There's two ways to resupply your business. The first is by purchasing supplies, and the other is by stealing them. If you choose to steal supplies, that's going to put you in a little mission where you go out, kill some enemies, probably steal some supplies and bring them back to your business. If you complete that mission solo, you're only going to fill up one of those little supply bars. If you have friends with you while you do that, each extra friend means that bar is going to go up by one more little bar. So if you're doing that mission with three people, one supply mission should fill that bar up by three fifths, basically. If you choose to buy supplies, on the other hand, each little bar in there is gonna cost $15,000 to fill. So if your supplies are completely empty, five times 15,000 equals 75,000. So it's gonna cost $75,000 to fully resupply. So what's better, buying supplies or stealing them? Like I said, we'll get into the stats and all that a bit later. But if I was gonna summarize it right now, don't buy supplies unless you have the staff and the equipment upgrade for that business. The staff and equipment upgrades are gonna dramatically improve the efficiency of your business and how much money that can actually make. So if you don't buy those upgrades for the business and you actually keep buying supplies, overall, you're actually gonna lose money. So definitely don't do that. Only buy the supplies unless you have both of the upgrades for your business. Let's talk about sell missions. Again, just like the bunker, when you go to sell your stock, always sell to the place that is gonna give you the most money. For most of you, 
that's gonna be Los Santos. By selling a product to the location that's further away, you're gonna get 50% more money than you would if you sold it locally. So obviously that's a complete no brainer. You always wanna sell it to the place where you're gonna get the most money. So we know how to sell, but when should you sell your stock? Well, that depends on how many people you actually have playing with you. If your stock bar is completely full, the game is gonna spawn four vehicles that have product in them. That would mean that you would have to drive four vehicles all across the map, and that wouldn't be a problem if you had four people. But if you're selling solo, you're not gonna be able to do that on your own within the time limit, and you're gonna end up losing a lot of money. The rule to remember with selling is every quarter that the stock bar fills up, it's gonna spawn an extra sell vehicle. So what that means is if you're playing solo, you only want one vehicle, of course. So that means you should only sell your product before the bar goes over one quarter of the way full. And you can see that here, the bar is exactly one quarter full. I click sell and as you can see, it only spawns one vehicle. So of course, that's what we want. If you had two people in your MC business while you went to sell, that means you can let it fill up to halfway because you can have two vehicles, that's fine. And so on until you get up to four. So now we know how these businesses work, let's talk about the locations. And thankfully, Rockstar has actually made this part really easy for us with the MC businesses. And the reason for that is because for all of the MC businesses, the cheapest ones are the best, in my opinion. The cheapest ones are all gonna be around the Sandy Shores area, which means they're all gonna be relatively close together, which makes it really easy. And because they're all out in that sort of Sandy Shores North area, that means the best location to sell is in Los Santos because that's the location that's furthest away, which means you're gonna get the most money by selling it there. So that's a win-win, really. So which business is best? Okay, let's get into the stats. I've sort of been pushing this one back. The cheapest document forgery office is 650,000. And right off the bat, this is gonna earn you around $16,000 profit per hour. That profit takes into consideration the cost of utilities and how much you have to pay your staff. To be honest, $16,000 profit an hour is pretty bad. And if you bought the staff and equipment upgrades for the document forgery, which would cost $745,000, that would increase the profit per hour to $38,000, which is a lot better obviously, but still not very good. All up, it would take you 36 hours just to break even and make back the money that you spent on the business in the first place. And considering that even after that, I would only be making $38,000 an hour from it, not even taking into consideration that I would want to buy supplies personally instead of stealing them if I had the upgrades. No, my advice is do not buy the document forgery office. I would probably actually recommend running the other way very fast. The weed farm is gonna cost $715,000. And right from the start, it's gonna make you around $20,000 profit an hour. With the staff and equipment upgrade, those are gonna cost $1.25 million. And that's gonna increase your profit to $42,000 an hour. What that means is it's gonna take 47 hours to make your money back, which again is a really long time. This one is a little bit better than the document forgery office though, but probably not that much better because still $41,000 an hour isn't really that great of a profit. So again, I probably wouldn't recommend buying this one either. The counterfeit cash factory is gonna cost $845,000. So it is a bit more expensive. And that one's gonna earn you $22,000 an hour from the start. With the staff and equipment upgrades, that's 1.15 million on top of that. And that's gonna increase your profit up to $48,000 an hour. So that's obviously a lot better than 41,000, but it's still gonna take 41 hours to break even on. But this is probably one of the businesses that I would actually recommend buying. The meth lab is $910,000 and surprisingly is only gonna earn you $21,000 an hour at the start. So that's really not that great. The staff and equipment upgrades are also really expensive at $1.43 million combined. So you probably wouldn't think that this business is that good. But once you actually buy those upgrades, your profit goes up to $51,000 an hour. 
and even though it still takes 45 hours to break even on, that profit makes it a really good business. But unless you're gonna buy the upgrades straight away, I probably wouldn't recommend it until you can afford the upgrades as well. And finally, the cocaine lockup is $975,000, so it's almost at 1 million. It's the most expensive to buy right off the bat. And right from the start, it'll earn $30,000 an hour. So that's the best of all of the businesses from the start. And with the $1.3 million upgrades, that goes up to... <laughs> $74,000 profit an hour, which is insane. Another massive bonus is that's only gonna take 31 hours to break even on, which if you couldn't already tell, makes it clearly the best MC business in the game. So which ones are worth it? Um, I'm not a fan of the weed farm or the document forgery office, as you can probably tell. So those two are gonna be a no from me, but the other three are definitely really good businesses to own, especially the cocaine lockup, of course. If I was gonna recommend an order to buy them in, I would probably go like this. I'd buy the cocaine lockup first and then the staff and equipment upgrades for it. Next, I would buy the cash factory and the upgrades and I would buy the meth lab and the upgrades last just because of how expensive that business is. It's really expensive overall. As for the security upgrade, every once in a while, your business can get raided by NPCs and if you don't kill them, they're actually gonna take all of your products. So that can be really annoying. The security upgrade is just gonna reduce the chance of that happening. Happening. But is it worth it? If you have millions of dollars, yes, but if you're struggling for money, I guess it's not really that necessary. It definitely is something I would aim for in the future because it can be really annoying if your business gets raided while you're trying to do something important. But yeah, for right now, if you're struggling, it's probably not that necessary. So that's pretty much everything we need to go over and that'll wrap up the video. So if this video helped you out, again, a thumbs up is always appreciated and consider subscribing for more stuff like this. Discord, TikTok, those two links are gonna be below. So definitely check those out if you're interested, but more important than any of that, make sure you have a great day, all right? And I'll see you in the next video. Poise.